Kids have to be warned that there's bullshit coming down the road. That's the biggest thing you can do for a kid. Tell them what life in this country is about. It's about a whole lot of bullshit that needs to be detected and avoided. That's the best thing you can do. No one told me. No one told me a thing like that. I was never warned about any of this. I had to find all of it out for myself. And there are still, as with you probably, a lot of things that you're expected to believe and accept in America that uh, I personally have a problem with, and I question a lot of these things. Give you an example. I saw a slogan on the guy's car that said, proud to be an American. And I thought, well, what the fuck does that mean? proud to be an American. You see, I've never understood national pride. I've never understood ethnic pride because uh, I'm Irish and I'm all four of my grandparents were born in Ireland, so I'm fully Irish. And when I was a kid, I would go to the St. Patrick's Day Parade and I noticed that they sold a button that said proud to be Irish. And I can never understand that because I knew that on Columbus Day, they sold a different button that said proud to be Italian. Then came black pride and Puerto Rican pride. And I can never understand ethnic or national pride because to me, Pride should be reserved for something you achieve or attain on your own, not something that happens by accident of birth. Being Irish... <laughs> Being Irish isn't a skill. It's a fucking genetic accident. You wouldn't say I'm proud to be 5'11". I'm proud to have a predisposition for colon cancer. So why the fuck would you be proud to be Irish or proud to be Italian or American or anything? If, hey, if you're happy with it, that's fine. Do that. Put that on your car. Happy to be an American. Be happy. Don't be proud. Too much pride as it is. Pride goeth before a fall. Never forget Proverbs, okay? Now, here's another slogan. Here's another slogan you run into all the time. God bless America. Once again, respectfully, I say to myself, what the fuck does that mean? God bless America? Is that a request? Is that a demand? Is that a suggestion? Politicians say it at the end of every speech, as if it were some sort of verbal tick that they can't get rid of. <laughs> God bless you and God bless America. God bless you and God bless America. I guess they figure if they leave it out, someone's going to think they're bad Americans. Let me tell you a little secret about God, folks. God does not give a flying fuck about America, okay? He doesn't care. <laughs> He never cared about this country. He, he never has, he never will, he doesn't care about this country any more than he cares about Mongolia, Transylvania, Pittsburgh, the Suez Canal, or the North Pole. He simply doesn't care, okay? He doesn't care. Listen, hey, there are 200 countries in the world now. Do these people honestly think that God is sitting around picking out his favorites? Why would he do that? Why would God have a favorite country? And why would it be America out of all the countries? Because we have the most money? Because he likes our national anthem? Maybe it's because he heard we have 18 delicious flavors of classic rice a <laughs> It's delusional thinking. It's delusional thinking. And Americans are not alone with these sort of delusions. Military cemeteries around the world are packed with brainwashed, dead soldiers who were convinced God was on their side. America prays for God to destroy our enemies. Our enemies pray for God to destroy us. Somebody's going to be disappointed. <laughs> Somebody's wasting their fucking time. Could it be everyone? <laughs> now, now. If people want to say God bless America, that's their business, I don't care, but here's what I don't understand. If they say God bless America, presumably they believe in God. And if they do, they must have heard God loved everyone. That's what he said. He loved everyone and he loved them equally. So why would these people ask God to do something that went against his own teachings? You know what these God bless America people ought to do? They ought to check with that Jesus fellow they're so crazy about. <laughs> They're always talking about what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? They don't want to know so they can do it. They just want to know so they can tell other people to do it. Well, I'll tell you what Jesus would have done. I'll tell you what Jesus would have done. He would have got up on the top of the Empire State Building and said, God bless everyone around the world forever and ever till the end of time. That's what Jesus would have done. And that's what these people should do. Or else they should admit that God bless America is really just some sort of an empty slogan with no real meaning except for something vague like, good luck. <laughs> good luck, America. You're on your own. Which is a little bit closer to the truth. Here's a, here's a civic custom that I don't understand. Maybe you can help me. Taking off your hat when a flag passes by. 
or when some jack off at the ballpark starts singing the national anthem, they tell you to take off your hat. What the fuck does a hat have to do with being patriotic? What possible relationship exists between the uncovered head and a feeling that ought to live in your heart? Suppose you have a red, white, and blue hat. Suppose you have a hat made out of a flag. Why would you take it off to honor the flag? Wouldn't you leave it on and point it toward the flag? And, and what's so bad about hats that you have to take them off? Why not take off your pants? Or your shoes. They tell you that at the airport, they say, take off your shoes. They tell you it's a national security, so taking off your shoes could be patriotic too. I started to question all this stupid hat shit when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I was a Catholic. Uh, at least until I reached the age of reason, okay? So, I was a Catholic. I was a Catholic for about two, two and a half years, something like that. And during that time, one of the things they told us was that if a boy or a man went into a church, he had to remove his hat in order to honor the presence of God. But they had already told me that God was everywhere. So I used to wonder, well, if God is everywhere, why would you even own a hat? Why not show your respect? Don't even buy a fucking hat. And just to confuse things further, they told the women exactly the opposite. Catholic women and girls had to cover their heads when they went into church. Uh, same as in certain temples, Jewish men have to cover their, their heads in those temples. In those same temples, Jewish women not allowed to cover their heads. So try to figure this shit out. <laughs> Catholic men and Jewish women, no hats. Catholic, Catholic women and Jewish men, hats. Somebody's got the whole thing totally fucking backwards, don't you think? <laughs> And what is this religious fascination with headgear? Every religion's got a different fucking hat. Did you ever notice that? The Hindus have a turban, the Sikhs have a tall white turban, Jews have a yarmulke, the Muslims have the kafiyah, the bishop has a pointy hat on one day and a round hat on another day, cardinal has a red hat, pope has a... Everybody's got a fucking hat. One group takes them off, the other group puts them on. Personally, I would never want to be a member of any group where you either have to wear a hat or you can't wear a hat. I think... <laughs> I think all religions should have one rule and one rule only, hats optional. <laughs> That's all you need to run a really good religion. Here's another one of these civic customs. Swearing on the Bible. You understand that shit? They tell you to raise your right hand, place your left hand on the Bible. Does this stuff really matter? Which hand? Does God really give a fuck about details like this? Suppose you put your right hand in the Bible, you raise your left hand. Would that count? Or would God say, sorry, wrong hand, try again? And what... Why does one hand have to be raised? What is the magic in this gesture? This seems like some sort of a primitive voodoo mojo shtick. Why not put your left hand on the Bible, let your right hand hang down by your side? It's more natural. Or put it in your pocket. Remember what your mother used to say? Don't put your hands in your pockets. Does she know something we don't know? Is this hand shit really important? Well, let's get back to the Bible, America's favorite national theatrical prop. Suppose the Bible they hand you to swear on is upside down. Or backward. Or both. And you swear to tell the truth on an upside-down, backward Bible. Would that count? Suppose the Bible they hand you is an old Bible and half the pages are missing. Suppose all they have is a Chinese Bible in an American court. Or a Braille Bible and you're not blind. Suppose they hand you an upside-down, backward Chinese Braille Bible with half the pages missing. At what point does all of this stuff just break down and become just a lot of stupid shit that somebody made up? They fucking made it up, folks. It's make-believe. It's make-believe. Now, all right. Okay.